their brain genius idea was, well, what, what's going to happen is that the Heterodox Academy is going to pioneer anti-woke HR department materials. There's a bunch of people from Harvard that hate wokeness, and they've gathered in Heterodox Academy, and they're going to release their own materials for HR resources that are going to be anti-woke. Well, there's a problem with this. I feel like addressing Adam. There's a problem with this, Adam. <laughs> and that is that, and Adam's big selling point for this anti-woke uh, anti HR department diversity stuff was that, well, well we know that HR... HR CRT stuff doesn't work. We we know that this this uh, the sensitivity training doesn't work. None of this stuff will work. It's designed not to work. Giving people PowerPoint presentations about how their behavior should be more sensitive in an engineering firm will not work. The, the only purpose of the HR department is to have the right sort of ant smell. It's to exude the the ideology of the ruling class so that. People understand that you are a hard target for a lawsuit. If, if, if you are landed in, inside a lawsuit scenario where you're staring down a judge and you're staring down a potential settlement that could cost your company billions, you know that the public impression is, is that you are a progressive company and there's going to be a graduate from Harvard that's going to be able to take the stand or more likely just give a statement saying, this company did everything that the experts at Harvard and Yale said was necessary to make us a progressive company that was committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Your anti-woke diversity seminars are not going to have that property. They're going to be identified by the progressive establishment as being not them. And then all of the immune reactions that work in favor of progressive policies are going to work against that. So on Aaron McIntyre's list, you, know, you can't punish your enemies. You can't get people fired. You can't get your own people hired teaching woke diversity seminars. You can't get people taught not to violate your own interests because the entire legal apparatus is, is working against you. So, so none of these payouts and, and, and you know, good luck getting people to actually pay out to a conservative institution. I mean, that might actually be Something a little more interesting is is what if you could get Bud, uh, Bud, I want Bud. Uh, what if you could get InBev, or their division and Heiser Bush, to give a huge cash payment to some kind of activist group that was more or less conservatively aligned? I would say that this is unprecedented. It's unprecedented because it, it's hard to see it's hard to see these these organizations existing and bringing successful suits. Usually, the the organizations that that sort of head up these activist causes, their their bread and butter is the threat of lawsuits. And if you're not on the progressive stack, your ability to bring a lawsuit against a modern woke corporation is virtually nil. So the the only the only um, organizations that are conservative or right wing look from the outside and. I mean, all these organizations are political, but, but they look explicitly political. They don't look like they're actually some kind of interest group that, that companies feel like they need to respect for some strange reason. The, the, only, the only thing, and this is actually the best answer, so what, what are the results of this boycott? The best answers I got from, from this question, after we kind of dispense with this idea that we can take a scalp, the reason why you can't take a scalp is the thing you're attacking is way, way, way bigger and stronger than you are. And it will you cannot take a scalp because in order for you to take a scalp, the thing you're attacking will need to feel fear. And the problem is, is that there's no way the thing you're attacking is going to accidentally feel fear. The second the progressive wing, the progressive cathedral feels fear, it's going to, it, all of its activist organs are going to kick into gear and retaliate against you twice as hard as you hit them. You might be able to get money away from them without noticing. You might be able to organize without them noticing or having a big retaliation. But, but sending a message in, in the form of do what we want or we're going to come after you, it's like trying to fire the VP who actually kicked off this brain dead marketing campaign with Dylan Mulvaney. The more you vilify her, the more they'll treat her as a martyr. And that will mean more opportunities for her, not less. Because being a progressive martyr 
opens more doors than being a conservative villain shuts. That's what I mean for this thing being way too big. Um, the, 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 the only answer that I think was, was the right one from all of this. This is sort of the Conan. Yes, that's the right answer moment. The right way to use the energy that comes off of a boycott is, is to build some kind of alternative. The problem is, is people aren't really thinking what this would look like. The, the best example might be something like having people go from using corporate beer, low quality beer, to using local microbreweries. I don't think it's possible to create sort of an industrial scale cheap beer alternative like Anheuser-Busch has with Bud Light or with any of its sort of cheap beer products that might be outside of the scale of our operation. But if Red America were to go from people who took pride in the corporate product to taking pride in, in the local product, uh, that might be a beginning. Another, another possibility, another thing that you could build in the alternative is some kind of community networking apparatus where you could signal what kinds of products were, were sort of aligned. There's a person who was on Alex Kashida's channel and Man, I'm going to kind of butcher this. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to look this up. It's not, it's not a good form to look things up in the middle of a live stream, but, but I want to get the person's name right, and I'm, I'm kind of um, blanking on it. It was... Um, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be down in a while. Um, I think it's Nate Fisher, I believe. Ah, yes, Nate Fisher. That's it. So Nate Fisher is one of the organizers for the new founding project. And he's an entrepreneur himself. And I think he has the right idea. With it. I mean, it's, it's a vague idea, but his idea is to come up with a network of aligned companies. And, and aligned companies are people who are ideologically interested in breaking ranks with the woke apparatus and who are interested in creating trust networks. And I think that's another key word, trust networks that they can use for hiring inside this network, that they can use for quality control inside this network. And, and if Fred America could do one thing, it would be to come up with a similar idea for consumers. What if there were indexes of companies that bore a brand, that had sort of a mark of approval? When I was a kid, there were all of these small grocery stores under the common banner of IGA, so IGA, and I don't know exactly what IGA was. It might have been some kind of co-op system, but it was an it was an it was an internet. It was a it was a um, it was called Independent Grocers Association, and it was some kind of co-op conglomerate that was designed to keep small local markets in play when all of the safely Safeways and Raley's and Targets and the big box stores were coming in. And the big box stores ultimately won. I think there are very few IGA stores still out there if the organization still exists. Uh, but but the, the idea was, was to create a sort of standard brand, a standard code of quality. And people were really loyal to the IGA brand. People would go out of their way to shop there, to shop local. If a similar thing could be done by Red America, that would be a huge step forward. And it would also be the portal to some kind of uh, some type of class or community consci consciousness. And I know I'm borrowing this from Marx, but this was the, this was the problem. Uh, you know, this was something that a uh, friend of the show, Juniper Tree pointed out on Twitter was that the, the, the way to kind of organize around this is to create a prestige product that's better than the corporate alternative. If you go from consuming Bud Light to consuming some kind of local craft or some kind of independently brewed, aligned beer, uh, you've not only just denied Anheuser-Busch or InBev the profit that comes from uh, you know, your purchase of the beer, you've essentially created a banner of identity for yourself that is more prestigious. It looks higher class to drink the small craft beer. It, and it's, it's better beer. You've essentially upgraded your status. And you can now rightfully look down on corporate beer as not only being something that hates you ideologically, but something that, that is actually kind of beneath your 
uh, your status. This is sort of the, I don't know if I use this phrase or if Gina Portray used this phrase. This is sort of the mean girl's approach uh, to, to, product, to, to product alignment. And you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's an interesting thing. This is, again, why, why do boycotts work when they go from the left to the right? I didn't mention this one uh, so much. But another reason why is that left-wing boycotts usually go from the high class to the low. So when rich people stop using a product, that product tends to be considered lower class. But this is not something that's immediately interchangeable. Rich products, uh, people know what high class products are. People know what low class products are. People understand what aristocratic behavior is and what aristocratic behavior is not. And so if you can create a boycott such that what you're actually doing is creating a new habit of life, that is inherently more aristocratic than your rivals or the thing you're leaving behind. You have functionally created something that's permanent that, that will filter down eventually to your enemies. The, 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 your enemies will eventually pick up the fact that, this, that what they're doing is no longer cool and that will hurt them more in the long run. 